we are going to go um, to the the best, um, the best region here, <laughs> not the west. It's the best. Um, anyway, so let's start. Uh, we're going to start uh, down in Arizona. So in uh, in Arizona, we've seen some quality quality matchups. Um, in the Gilbert qualifier, which is um, which is being shown, we have seen um, we had the Red Alliance um, who ended up winning the event. Um, being one of honestly one of the most stacked alliances I've ever seen in terms of <laughs> historical success, you had Team eighty nine ninety five, the Jaeger Robotics, who were I believe the twenty sixteen World Championship Division finalists. You have the perennial contenders of uh, forty two sixteen Rise of Festus, always successful, and you had Team twenty six forty four Valley X Robotics, who won the twenty fifteen World Championships. So wow. I think I mean personally. The game right now, it was a little bit slow. Um, of course, it's going to be lower scoring at the current moment, but I think it was very cool to just see these teams sort of um, having some fun, um, having some fun in that area. In addition to this, congratulations to Team 16684 Cosmic Voltage for winning the Inspire Award. Very, very impressive stuff. Uh, one thing with this, I want to talk about Rise of Festus and their robot. Is I'm not sure if they do it in this match, but uh, one their first qualifier, what they actually did is there was a tipped over stone, and they were able to ride it with their intake and then score it. And I thought that was like it may not have been like the most efficient use of time. Like you, they could have just gone back and gotten another stone. But if it's a situation where it's like in the corner of the depot, that is something you will have to do. Otherwise, I mean, you're pretty much done for the rest of the match. Absolutely, I think that that's a that was also very interesting because Rise of Hephaestus is um they 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 always have some good good intakes and yeah. um I also that's actually something that I was thinking about just earlier yeah. nothing not something I put too much thought into but yeah if a stone is sideways if a stone is uncollectible in your depot mm -hmm. you're screwed right like yeah you're screwed you're, you're, yeah, you yeah. you really need to figure out a way to get that you just have to <laughs> ram it out at that point yeah unless you have the capability of your intake mm -hmm. to fix it mm -hmm. so I think that's yeah. very important and very impressive that's a very good point you make over there so yeah you can see in this match right now those two robots rise of Hephaestus and the their alliance partner they're sort of clashing in that in that limited space and that ended up losing them one of their stones. So they actually ended up dropping a stone because of that limited space. So I think that's another thing to keep track of. Like, you know, and you can see it continuing to go on that they're sort of just ramming into each other and that's mm -hmm. losing them a lot of time on their lines. Yeah. I think that's, yeah, like, that's a great point, Ashray. Like, robot robot interaction on the same team will be a really big deal this year. And seeing how teams can effectively uh, minimize their collisions and just work as, like, one solid unit instead of two teams constantly cl clashing with one another. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. All right. So moving into the state of California, we have seen events uh, starting in full force. NorCal, San Diego, and Los Angeles have all seen a plethora of league meets to come, um, with a lot of unique robots making it into the mix. So um, I just want to um, take a, a brief deviation from this. Um, so for our viewers out there, uh, I would like to remind you all to talk to your competitions coordinator to try to get those scores, try to get those match results onto um, theorangealliance.com. It really does help us create valuable content for you all, and it also allows you guys to be able to see your team's progression throughout the season. The Orange Alliance's database has been growing significantly throughout the years, but we need your help to ensure that we're able to find every event um, and the match data for every event on this amazing service. Now, with that out of the way, um, we're going to get back into the recap. The Los Angeles region has had the league meet had had uh, the league meet zeros and ones for all of their leagues, and while while there haven't been that many massive scoring uh, like matches, um, this region has been shaping shaping up to be a region centered around continue uh, uh, consistent autonomous scoring. As you can see in this video, um, teams are able to compete co complete some advanced. Uh, auto objectives very early in the season of course it's not the most advanced it's not like some of the other teams we've been seeing but i believe that just the consistency that this region has been putting out will allow for um, a very interesting future um so i i can't wait to be watching how um the teams in this area progress mm -hmm. um but in addition to this, um, some uh, some teams have been putting up some um, uh, teleop objectives. They've been working very hard on their teleop objectives as well. Uh, a team that comes to mind is Team 5921 La Cañada Engineering Club. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. we don't have any match video for these teams, but they've been able to put some consistent three to four stacks in their League Meet 1, so I can't wait to see how they improve on that as um, as we move forward. Um, but as we move up north to NorCal, we've been hearing some big names continue to make their impact. NorCal is a little different than um, the um, Los, than Los, uh, Los Angeles. 
um, because they have qualifiers as opposed to league mates. And each qualifier only sends one to two teams to the NorCal championship. That means that the competition gets very, very intense. So when we talk about these heavy hitters, Team uh, 8375, Vulcan Robotics, I think they were the finalist alliance captain in 2016. They've always been a very, very consistent contending team. They've come out swimming, swinging once again with a strategy <laughs> revolving around efficiently competing both um, teleop and um, autonomous objectives. They've been able to maintain that effective scoring. But as you can see here in the Saratoga, uh, in the Saratoga event, um, if we move forward just a little bit, there's another team that's been putting up, uh, that's been a surprise contender, and they've been putting up some insane scores. Team 8802, but the, the, the interesting thing is they're not even from the region. Team 8802 mm. Infinite Resistance from Bellevue, Washington, has been really, really interesting to watch this year. They've been competing in North Cal, and they've been putting up points like crazy. I'd love to see how they, how they move along as time progresses, because they have been uh, doing a very, very good job. Uh, Shashir, I remember in Relic Recovery, uh, my team, we had a match with Vulcan Robotics, mm -hmm. and I remember, like, they didn't have a Relic Arm on their robot, but they were like, all right, listen, guys, like, we can, our intake is super fast, we can just throw, like, we can just stack these glyphs like crazy, you worry about doing yours, we'll worry about ours, but then as soon as we're done, go stack both Relics, we'll have the other glyphs taken care of, and, like, uh, Vulcan Robotics definitely, definitely knows how to build a top, top intake, and I think we'll definitely see that again with them this year, and I'm really Really excited to see how they play it out mm -hmm. there i think that they were one of the um the the real pioneers of that four um four inch green wheel intake in mm -hmm. relic recovery right um mm -hmm. like a lot of teams have done it they were the one they, i think they made it really efficient so mm -hmm. and that's a design that i've seen coming here as well so mm -hmm. i'd love to see I, i'd love to see this as well but let's yeah. talk a little bit about 8802 right uh -huh. yeah like, look yeah. at these guys look at them they're already up there they're stacking <laughs> they're, they're getting it ready yeah um but if you look at, i think if we look at them right if we just look mm -hmm. at their robot it's I personally believe it's the epitome of efficient design. It's, <laughs> it's, it seems very minimalistic, but it seems mm -hmm. very intricately designed, right? It's oh, not yeah. something that they just slapped together. It's something that they made sure every single part is as efficient as possible. That mm -hmm. intake, amazingly oh, efficient. My. Oh, that my. stacking, that, yeah. that, that lining up, it's, it's just they, they're, yeah. when, they're, when they get there, they get there and they are ready. I think that that's what makes them so amazing. I mean, yeah. I remember like when they first posted that video of their auto, and I saw their block, their intake suck up the block. I was like, "Whoa, wait, wait a minute! When did that happen?" Like it was like so, so yeah. fast. I like didn't even register it the first time, and I was like, I was just shocked. Absolutely. And, yeah, just by looking at 8802's robot, like especially right next to like some of those bigger tanky robots, like you know Vulcan, mm -hmm. you can see that 8802 is like a really sleek and nice, like low top design. Like their robot looks really small. But when you see it in action, it's super fast. And their so outtake fast. mechanism especially is one thing I want to point out. So their mm -hmm. outtake has like a four bar sort of motion. And that's one thing that I think they were able to get a really, really fast motion on. Uh, if you oh, can see definitely. their outtake in action, they're able to go move that four bar out like really, really quickly. I think that's one thing that really helps their speed that because they're able to have that really fast intake and outtake speed, that's able to maximize their cycle times. Absolutely. Yep. So moving on to the state of Nevada. Um, the state of Nevada uh, has seen a, quite a few league meets come their way. Um, teams are starting to get their bearings, and they're consistently scoring their autonomous and endgame objectives. So I really can't wait to see what comes out of here in the future. Tyler? Yeah, something I just want to comment. I actually uh, went out to Nevada a couple uh, weeks ago. Uh, First Nevada brought me out there as uh, they're going to be expanding uh, their programs a lot. Uh, they got this huge grant from Tesla uh, to just keep expanding programs. So they literally brought me out there wow. to train new game announcers and MCs uh, specifically for FLL and FTC. Uh, so we had about oh, 20 okay. people or so uh, that we uh, had a great time to get some experience with, uh, the kind of show them the ropes now. It's it's that one limited time that I get with them, right, to do something like that. But <laughs> I'm really excited to see what First Nevada can bring. I'm a huge fan of First Nevada. I, I, I do their FRC event as the MC there. Uh, and they really got their stuff together. And their fund development has really come together, and I can't wait to see uh, how much Nevada ends up growing, especially outside of just Reno and Las Vegas, which have a pretty established foothold already. And I think there's a lot more remote areas we're going to start seeing teams pop up in Nevada. So I think that's very exciting to see. Yeah, absolutely. 
So the next time you're you're in Nevada, you're in a Nevada competition, and the MC is killing it, you know who to thank. <laughs> and if they're All not, right. if they're not, then don't worry about it. Yeah, if they're not, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not on Tyler. Don't worry about it, boys. All right. So moving on to the best state, the state of Timber, Oregon. Um, Oregon has had every league uh, uh, in in the state uh, compete every at least two league meets, and we're already seeing some impressive show, showing from some teams. Um, starting up north near Portland, the Cedar Mill League, historically one of the toughest leagues in the state, has continued to put up some some efficient numbers. Um, team 12808 Revamped Robotics has been able to show up with a two Skystone Autonomous, and both teams 12808 and 12599 Overcharged have been putting up four to st six stone high towers with capstones in the competition. In addition, many teams in this league, like 11089 Out of Bounds and 12907 Piece of Pie, have been working on creating high scoring autonomous modes, so I'm excited to see what comes out of this region. Moving over to Hillsboro in the Silicon Forest League, we see consistent contenders 8610 being able to complete uh, their autonomous objectives as well as consistently create some three stacks. So we see them really, um, really getting up there in terms of scoring consistency. Finally, moving south to Roseburg, we see teams able to consistently complete um, the end game and autonomous objectives. All in all, a very competitive state. No bias here. And I really can't wait to see what comes in the future. Yeah, um, I I just want to talk about uh, twelve eight oh eight. Uh, I think their uh, scoring mechanism was very interesting in the sense that when it came out as um, uh, it came out at a one eighty degree angle on the robot, and then it switched over to a ninety degree uh, angle for the stone. And I think uh, Shishir, maybe you can confirm this for us. Uh, do they have the ability to stack both ninety degrees and one hundred and eighty degrees? They do. Um, I believe oh, so. Okay. In this league meet, they did not. They would only programmatically they were limited but after this yeah. thing they did change it up they did make sure that they were able to um do oh, both that. of them and uh do you know if these teams are running their ever famous swerve drives again this year or uh no so neither of these teams are doing the swerve drive so 12808 the one that they brought out last year um it's gone in, in favor of mechanisms and 12 oh. 12599 is going with the six wheel this year so oh, um wow. so it's it's uh it, they I, I believe they looked at the challenge and they looked at the efficiency of, of all, all of these types of mechanisms yeah. and they decided mm -hmm. on, um, on, I guess, what they believe to be the most efficient type of drive. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I think drivetrain is a really interesting topic this year. Um, we see a lot of teams going off right off the bat with mechanic wheels like we see every year. Uh, and But I think that this year especially, mechanic wheels is an interesting choice because once you get onto that, once you move the foundation in the autonomous period, you want to sort of have that ability to sort of slide out of that corner or even like, you know, be able to maneuver around to, when you're stacking stones to get that alignment. So I think mechanic wheels could be especially useful this year. Um, and I think we also see some newer, like some really advanced teams going after a differential swerve drive, which is all also relatively new in FTC. What do you guys think about that? I, I uh, okay, I think it's impressive. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm going to hold back on commenting on it until I actually see it in action. Yeah. Because yeah. theory and practice are very different, and that's yeah. something that's extremely true in FTC. So we'll see how it goes. Um, mm -hmm. Kudos to the teams who are trying it, though, because that is it's yeah. a real feat, and uh, it's very, very impressive. Yeah. All right. So moving into Washington. So here's the thing. Um, few states are living up to the hype as much as the Evergreen State. <laughs> Washington hasn't, have as ha hasn't had many events yet, or at least that many events with data online. Um, but what they have had so far has been blowing minds across the Western Seaboard. In Richie League Meet 1, the talk of the town is the dominant performance of none other than Team 8802 Infinite Resistance. We saw a glimpse of them earlier in California um, because they're also competing in them North Cal in those North Cal events. Um, but this team has been one of the few teams, in my opinion, who's been producing content that directs the discussion of the future of this game. Um, with, oh, yeah. this, with their autonomous, capable of detecting and placing Skystones, as well as their seamless teleop stacking ability, we'll be seeing a lot more of this team throughout the season. Yeah, uh, one thing I wanted to talk about is in that auto video, their blue foundation got really, really close to the other uh, other alliances foundation. And I mean, as we all know, there are some big penalties for touching the other foundation in auto. So hopefully teams will stay away from that and make sure not to uh, get any unnecessary penalties when they when they can. 
And you can um, see they actually have a really interesting strategy with their foundation. They like move it halfway out after their first cycle. And then after they get that second sky stone, they move it yeah. completely into the corner. So yeah. that's actually kind of interesting that they're doing like half and half. And I wonder mm -hmm. how that will play out, especially when they have an alliance partner in the way. That was actually my thought as well. The alliance partner, how is it going to impact? We don't know. Yeah. We'll see. You know, mm -hmm. we'll see. And another thing in their autonomous is a really advanced software mechanism that they've used to like sort of get, make sure that they grab a stone. Because you saw that when they didn't grab a stone, they sort of like kept going after it until they grabbed it, which I thought was kind of interesting. That's that's some really advanced software programming that sort of led them to that next level of autonomous. Absolutely. Totally agree. Mm -hmm. All right. So moving right. quite far away from Washington, we go <laughs> to the Lone Star State. We have a lot to cover here. So Texas is notorious for their consistently competitive Austin Metro League, and this year, it's living up to those expectations. We've been seeing some great effort being put up by Team 88-86 Saber, um, who were able to get a six stack in their first league meet. We were also seeing consistent performances from the Viperbots clans, with Team 7161 Viperbots Hydra and 6209 Viperbots Venom being able to get them three stacks pretty consistently. Moving away from Austin, Texas also had league meets in the Rio Grande Valley, and these meets also showed somewhat consistent endgame scoring. I really can't wait to see what comes out of this area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, um, I mean, we've always seen super consistent, like, high performances from the Viperbots clan, as you said. And, I mean, I'm sure Hydra and Venom and uh, uh, all of these really top teams will come up with something pretty amazing this year as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, um... Uh, if we click on, the, if we look at the link um, that that will be shown soon, if we look at this video, we also have to check out 6832 Iron Reigns robot that according, <laughs> uh, that according to user Jose Bobelli looks like a BB-8. So what do we think of this? <laughs> I mean, I know Iron Reign has had really impressive programming uh, over the past couple of years. I mean, they just have top top programmers, and I mean, it seems like they've just continued that this year. Absolutely. I love this robot. It's very, it's very unique, and I can't wait to see how it goes, mm -hmm. uh, how it, how it really, uh, how it stacks up this year. Mm -hmm. That's actually oh, the first yeah. time I'm seeing that robot, and it <laughs> looks really, really interesting compared to the, most of the other robots we're seeing. But it looks 100% <laughs> wow. troll. I'm just gonna say that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like, is this um, an actual real robot? Um, I mean, I know 6832 has built very unique robots in the past. Last year, their mm -hmm. robot, like, flipped over, or not flipped over, but, like, f like turned over on its side multiple times during the match in order to, like, uh, score minerals and stuff, and it was just a very cool design to see implemented. It's so I wouldn't be too Iron surprised. Man. Yeah, I wouldn't be too surprised if 6832 rolls up with something very impressive in the competition this year. That's just crazy, though. Wow. Okay. <laughs> that All right. <laughs> So let's go into the comments a little bit more. So from uh, pin 28 um the human player is allowed to reposition um, uh, slash move the block around as long as there are no, uh, no, no other blocks or robots in the depot. Um, if this is a question, then yes. Um, but if this is a comment, then also yes. Like, uh, I think I think what uh, Pim is doing is addressing our previous point, talking about like uh, Hephaestus and other teams like uh, flipping up overturned oh. blocks. And so what he's saying is like instead of flipping the block up, what a robot can do is just move out of the way, have the human player fix it, and then go back in. And I think that's a really great point. That is a great point. I, I didn't think about that. That's that's a better solution than designing your robot around that. But yeah, so good point. Good point. Um, J from uh, Jimbo7989, um, have we seen successful clawbots? I would say yes. Um, I would say we saw quite a few videos um, yeah. during, like, uh, throughout the course of this. Um, teams are able to um, effectively utilize it. What was that team? Neutrinos, I believe, from yes, Florida? Yes, Neutrinos. Yes. Right? yes. Um, and, I think um, that's a... Yeah, go ahead. And I actually just... I was just talking with them recently, and like now they've increased their... Li their they've uh, added more slides, and now they're able to get like, you know, nine to ten uh, stones in a match. Like, that's their max cap. So hopefully we'll be seeing even more uh, stacks from them. I'd be really excited for that. Yeah, mm -hmm. wow. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.